Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming, me Zug. So today we're taking a look at another one of my Zealot builds. So this is the build that I had the most success with when we were farming up the Karnak Twins over Christmas. And it's just a build I keep sort of gravitating back to because it's just fun, it's quick. And it's pretty easy to play once you kind of get used to what's going on. So let's take a look. So as you can see, it is a knife build. We're using the Katachan Mark III Combat Blade. And for this, we're basically dumping as much crit into it as we can. So I kept the unyielding on there because it's actually really nice for dealing with bosses. And I rolled crit onto it because obviously we want as much crit as we can get. Uh, the modifiers are pretty much how I wanted them. Mobility being the lowest, everything else as high as I can get it. And as for the blessings, We've gone for Flesh Terror, plus 8 bleed stacks on Critical Hit, and Lacerate, plus 4 bleed stacks on non-weak spot hit. So this is a brawler build. Not quite... Um, you don't have to be as accurate with this build as you would with other knife builds. Other knife builds require you to always hit weak spots to keep it rolling. This build wants you just to hit anywhere but. So that's how the dagger works. And then we're going to move on to the... Uh, gun. This is the Zorona Mark 2A Quick Draw Stub Revolver with Maniac and Range Specialist with Surgical and Hand Cannon. Now again with the secondary weapons you can pretty much use what you want and most of us probably will be using the Bolt Pistol when it drops on Tuesday. But for now this is kind of how I'd roll the Stub Revolver and if you want or have a Laz Pistol you can roll it like this with Damage, uh, range damage specialist and 25 damage to maniacs. You can switch out specialist for flak if you want. And the blessings are Dum Dum and Infernus. This is a very crit heavy build, so Infernus is pretty much going to drop on every single target you hit. But if you want to use a different weapon, you're not locked into any real range weapon choices on this. Use what you have or what you enjoy the most. And as for the curios, we're pretty much running two health and one toughness with the perks being Toughness, Max Health, and Toughness Regeneration on every single one of them. You can drop the Toughness for more health if you want to, or if you really, really need it, you can drop it for a wound, but I don't think putting an extra wound on it is that good. It's a bit of a crutch, because you don't want to get used to having it and then later on taking it away, unless you're using a Martyrdom build, of course, and then you want plus wounds on everything. So that is our armory let's check out the talents okay so as you can see here we've gone for two points in the middle anointed in blood just to make our ranged weapon just that that little bit more punchy when we're having to snipe anything and purge the unclean increased damage against infested and unyielding enemies and this damage applies to both ranged and melee so this is quite a nice damage boost for us and then we're going over here onto the right for backstabber and then Scourge, melee critical hits, apply bleed, causing damage over time. We want lots and lots of bleed in this build. And then we're going to be grabbing Second Wind, replenish 15% toughness on the successful dodge. You will be moving continuously with this build and dodging as much as you can. And then Enduring Faith, 50% toughness, damage reduction on critical hit for 4 seconds. Most hits are going to be critical hits. And then we're going to take the Blades of Faith. When this first came out, I wasn't that impressed with it, but after playing with it for a few months... I can see how good this is. It is very good for just launching at something that's slightly outside of your reach or you can't switch to your gun and this thing will pretty much one shot anything if you can get it, get a headshot in. And they're going to grab down here into Dance of Death, 75% spread and, and recoil for three seconds on a successful dodge, but we mostly want it for Thy Wrath Be Swift. Enemy melee attacks cannot stun you. On taking damage, you gain 15% movement speed. We want to be moving and moving quickly at all times. And then we're coming over here onto the left. We're grabbing Duelist, 50% weak spot and critical hit damage for 3 seconds on dodge. We're not worried too much about the weak spot, but it is the critical hit damage increase, which is what we really, really want here. And then Until Death and Holy Revenant. As I say in every video when I talk about this, Holy Revenant has been nerfed massively and it does not give you as much health back as it used to, but it is still good. Then into Benediction, down into Fury of the Faithful, 
Redouble Zeal, picking up Faithful Frenzy for the increased attack speed. Then coming down here for Punishment into Invocation of Death. Melee critical hits reduce combat ability cooldown, as I said in the last video. This ability plays off this and this plays off that, so they should keep each other rolling continuously as long as you're fighting. And then into Blazing Piety, 15% critical hit chance for 8 seconds when in Fury. Fury is triggered when 25 enemies have died within 25 meters. In most games that will happen pretty damn quickly. Especially if you're playing Damnation or Auric Damnation. There will be many enemies all the time. And then we're taking Fury Rising and Righteous Warrior. 10% critical hit chance from Blazing Piety. So, all of this is good and gives us lots and lots and lots of crit. So this, as I said, is more of a brawler build. With other knife builds, you have to be very careful to try and hit weak spots. I mean, you can still hit weak spots, but you are going to be laying down those bleeds on mostly body shots. So if you have to, you can dodge and just slash. And this is how you're going to be dealing with hordes mostly. Dodging, slashing, and just keeping everything with bleed stacks on. And if anything is slightly harder to kill than a normal mob, you want to be heavy attacking, preferably from behind, but I know that isn't always available to you. But heavy attacks from behind are generally what you want to deal with specials, heavier targets, or things like Ogrins. As you can see, even the throwing knives are pretty decent against them. There you go. And this even works against Bulwarks and Crushers, although obviously it's not quite as effective against the Crushers. But when you're rolling through a fight instead of just standing behind it trying to get it to proc, you will have the crit rolling at all times. But yeah, that's how the Brawler build works, and I've had quite a lot of success with this build. I know a lot of people have been have used it for the Karnak Twins, and this is more of a fun, fast-paced, not sort of a, it's not a, a guided narrow arrow killing specific targets, this is just a fun, keep you in the fight, heavy brawler build as I said but I do hope you folks like it and I'll just show the talent tree one last time before we go but I really do hope you guys like it and if you do you know let us know down in the comments and uh, I shall see you all for the next one so if you've enjoyed the content please like and subscribe and hit that little bell for notifications until the next one take it easy and I'll see you later